Hey everybody, welcome back into the Woody Hayes Athletic Center. It's time for your favorite and mine, Snap Judgments, also known as Snappy Jays. Snap it into existence. Why doesn't Berm ever snap? He's the one who wanted to call yeah, can it. you snap? I'm not a real big fan of Snappy Jays. Do you know how to snap? Wait, 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 wait. Come oh, he it. can't snap? Do you know how to snap? Well, yeah, that was okay. okay. That's okay. Bill Landis, Berm. I'm Austin Ward. Tuesday night in the Woody. The practices have shifted. Class has started. That's very important to these scholar athletes. And the defensive backs, including all of the safeties and most of the cornerbacks met with us to provide some updates on the Buckeyes as the season opener draws another day closer. Where should we begin, uh, Bill? Man, um, I'm pretty impressed with Perry Iliano. Um, he's a guy who I think maybe the thing you hear about him first is how good of a recruiter he is. He's a really sharp football mind and talking with Lathan Ransom he said maybe the biggest thing he's picked up this offseason is just a deeper kind of more fully formed understanding of of the defense of football in general and he went out of his way like four different times to thank Perry, Perry Iliano for that and then Perry was talking about how much he prides himself on his teaching ability and, and I just came away really impressed with with him and and it made me feel even stronger that we're about to see, I think, something pretty special from the safety group because you, you talk to those guys, we know their skill sets. There's a lot of talented dudes back there, but when you talk to them and get a feel for the frame of mind that they're in, and then you talk to Perry and, and get a feel for how he's teaching those guys and bringing them along, you know, so in a safety-driven defense mm. seems like it's pretty mm. important. Uh, there, we've, <laughs> we've spent the entire offseason talking about Jim Knowles and what the, the impact that he can have on this defense. Safety-driven defense. But it is important to understand that he, we also replaced here in Columbus in the last nine months both coaches in the secondary. Yep. And for a program that sort of built its defense on the secondary, that is a huge shift. And it is not one that is made lightly when you're talking about replacing Kerry Combs, who obviously was a, a legend at Ohio State, um, and Matt Barnes, who was Ryan Day's like first hire when he became a full-time head coach. So you know that that was a difficult decision in the last year for Ryan Day. And I think it's, as Bill's talking about, like, it's pretty clear he'd all run with Perry Eliano and Tim Walton. But both those guys have a very easy way of connecting to people and making sure that people are are hearing them and, and that they're hearing them as people. Like the, 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 these kids are not talking about coaches that they just have only had for a few months. Like they really do connect with them, and you can see that. And I, again, I think that shows that there is something really positive building in the secondary. The way that they talk ball, not just the coaches who can always present it at a high level if they want to. Uh, or can dumb it down if they need to for someone like me. But mm. all the players are also communicating at a way that I think – I'll talk specifically about Josh Proctor because he's one of the guys that I've known the longest. His ability to articulate the scheme, his role in it, understand why he needs to play it that way. And, and just for one year with Jim Knowles and, and Perry Eliano back there is notable to me. It's impressive. Uh, he hasn't had a chance to play it in a game yet, of course, and we'll see what that looks like in a week and a half. But he's talking about the game in a way that's different than the past. And there was both Lathan and Perry, Perry Eliano and Jerry Enig sharing the anecdote about Lathan Ransom and Eliano coming back to the facility last night after the NIL event to get in more work. I think, I mean, none of this stuff guarantees anything against Notre Dame. It certainly points the arrow in the right direction that some of the stuff that Ohio State secondary has talked about with being BIA. Obviously, the results slipped, and you have to put in the work to get to that level. It seems like they are doing that now. I know we make a lot of jokes about the safety-driven defense thing because it's, it's you know it's fun and we need something to laugh about. Yeah, it is true. Um, I don't I don't want that to get lost in us making jokes about it. And for it to work, like these guys got to be sharp. They got to know what they're talking about. They got to be able to have a sense of of more than just their position in this defense. And talking with these guys tonight and sort of throughout the offseason, over time, you, you get the sense that all of them, not just Lathan, who I singled out, but and yeah. Josh, who you singled out, all of them are developing in, in their football sense. And they have, honestly, they have six safeties that I think they could throw out there if they played a game tomorrow. And I'm not sure any one of us would bat an eye at them. Like, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Court Williams was asked about the safety-driven defense and do they what that means, but also is that a – is that a pressure piece that the guys back there want? And he essentially said, yes, like they want the pressure. And what it means is if they screw up, they're giving up points. And yeah. So these guys know <laughs> it, what, what safety driven defense doesn't mean that the deep, the safeties have to be the best part of the defense. It's just saying that if, as the safeties go, 
so maybe too does the, the defense. And, uh, you know, just thinking to a year ago, as we were preparing for Ohio State at Minnesota, we went into that game going, we have no idea about anybody in the secondary. And I think yeah. after, and maybe it's just preseason hype, maybe it's some of the hyperbole that we're just buying into, which, which you hear around here, but I think there's like 10, 11 dudes in the secondary now that you could run out there, as you said, tomorrow and feel, feel pretty confident that things are going to be significantly better than they were a year ago. And that's why I said two weeks ago, I think this would be a top 10 pass defense in the country. Well, there is a sort of nexus point for Ohio State with this secondary that the guys that we're talking about are not two, three-star development players. No. And stars matter. Josh Proctor Sawyer. is an athletic star. Ronnie Hickman might not have had the highest recruiting ranking of anybody back there, but he's a proven performer. I think for he was like the number ninth ranked it's safety a, in the country. Borderline since. top 100 guy. Yes, yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. but we're not, we're not Scrub. talking about chopped liver here. <laughs> and obviously we know what the reputation is for those guys at corner. And Tanner McAllister, what he may have been lacking in that regard, may have been lacking. Uh, coming from a nice program at a high level in Texas that, and spending four years playing Division One football for a Jim Knowles defense, like, the pieces are all there to work with. And then you throw in Court Williams and Lathan Ransom on top of that and the versatility of Cameron Martinez. I think that it's fair. It may, it may wind up being hyperbole. Again, we don't know for sure until they get on the field, but I think you can justifiably look at it and say, this is a $2 million defensive coordinator. This is one of the most successful NFL defensive back co coaches around, one of the you know, rising respected coaches and a ton of raw talent to work with, uh, not even raw in some cases, proven veterans. That's a lot. I, I don't think that it's unreasonable to think that this secondary can be leaps and bounds better, if not one of the best in the country. I think it will be. We'll, we'll see about best in the country, but but I, I do think it will be significantly better than it was last year, particularly at, at the safety position. Corner was pretty good. I mean, Denzel was good last year. Yeah. Um, safety was a little hit or miss, especially after Josh Proctor got hurt. I think they're going to be better across the board. And the thing that I like about it, too, is we talked about earlier in the week, Jim Knowles, the confidence that he is exuding. And I like that. And the players exuded, too, but like not to the point where you feel like they're being boastful about it before they've done anything. Yeah. And and Tanner McAllister said said as much. I asked him, I said, like, you know what this defense looks like or what it's supposed to look like when everything's clicking. How close are you to that right now? And he said, like, they feel like they're close, but he said it doesn't matter what they feel like. All that matters is what, what it looks like when the ball gets put down against against Notre Dame. So I don't I don't think that they've taken what seems to be a very successful camp for them to this point and and turned it into, oh, we've we fixed everything, we've arrived. I think they still have that edge to prove to people that they're better than they were last year. And secondaries, I mean, whether we want to say it or not, like rely almost entirely on the defensive line and how, how they yeah, get for sure. the quarterback. So you can be a much improved secondary and still not see some of the results that maybe people would expect to see if the quarterback is having all day to throw the football. Mm -hmm. So all these things have to go hand in hand. But I think what's interesting is Jim Knowles on Monday said that he thought that they were now at 75% of the defense installed. So when we talked to him 10 days ago and he said 25%. So there's 10 days left until the season opener against Notre Dame. So by that time, my math, 125% of the defense <laughs> should be installed. So I think there there has to be this growing confidence is that how numbers work yeah without question i'll All buy right. it i'm super at math um <laughs> they they really have just been building slowly and getting themselves ready to go and you you do see it you see that confidence these, these guys feel like they they fit and they belong and a big part of that confidence is going to be having those cornerbacks available the top choices we'll see you know how close they actually are denzel burke basically left uh no doubt that he was going to be playing, that he thought all those guys would be out there against Notre Dame. Uh, I don't imagine why he would have said anything to the contrary <laughs> at this point. But it would have been weird. Didn't though. show any sort of he ill did. effects to. <laughs> Denzel, are you going to play against Notre <laughs> Dame? Nah. nah. Take this <laughs> what about Jordan and uh, Cam? Nah. Nah. No, they're, they're out. Uh, Cam Brown, unfortunately, I say not all the cornerbacks met with us. We didn't get a chance to talk to him about dealing with snap limitations and rep counts throughout camp. He had to go to class. Uh, he's a studious young man as a, very important to the Ohio State Buckeyes to make sure that everyone is eligible and ready to play and graduate on time. So we didn't get an update on his uh, frustrations, which I can I can probably speak for him, that he's not enjoying <laughs> that part, uh, or to Jordan Hancock. But did talk to J.K. Johnson, and that is another guy who's starting to remind me of the way Denzel Burke went like this with the way that he's talking about his physical development. Uh, Court Williams was asked, I, this jumped out to me, he was asked who the fastest guy in the secondary was. Uh, and he said J.K. Johnson is routinely clocking 23 miles an hour on their GPS tracking device. Is that good? 
That seems pretty Depends good. Depends on what, if you're in a school zone or not. Yeah, and, that's true. And especially because I thought that he would say Cameron Brown. So, I don't know. He's he's the fourth guy if they're fully healthy, right? I, that's our expectation. Yeah. But he certainly looks like he's close to having to help them against Notre Dame and early in the year. He's got to, like you and I talked about Cameron Brown on, on the daily. Um, and his, uh, what's the right word for it? Je ne sais quoi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. JK seems to have a little bit of that. He uh it's a St. Louis thing. Yeah, it must it's, be a St. Louis thing. He's got he's got a little bit of uh he's from the like, Lou, like, and he's proud. I'd like to reach across the table and rip your head off kind of thing going on, <laughs> which I like. They're so. competitive kids, man. Those, those kids come up and they they want to tussle. You know what I mean? Like they like it. They enjoy the tussle. <laughs> and and we we saw that with Cam Brown last year in Ann Arbor. I'd, as we talked about, if someone else has to get in the mix, JK Johnson is not going to shy away from that. That is a kid that wants to fight. Um, and I think you need kids like that. It's, you know, we talked about that with on the daily. You, you and I did a. We, we do a lot of talking on the daily. Wow, yeah, we talk on the daily. <laughs> but uh, you know, it was a situation. <laughs> I, don't, I have no idea. But the point hey. is, I said like I think you Buddy. could see more um, personal foul type penalties out of yeah. this defense, and that's what I was. I think you said you wanted to. I do want to. Oh, okay. Not like I'd rather have that than like you not know, like, key like an encroachment or, or, or a pass interference. Yeah, earn, you know? it. earn it. If you're going to get 15, you better. Better earn it. Better earn that 15. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, what? Else? we saw Cameron Babb was out running after practice and wearing a hefty brace, but like moving pretty good for yeah, a kid that's, like, uh, legitimately you know, running. he wasn't yeah. like gimpy. So that's, you know, was out there. positive yep. out there. Um, overall, I just really like this secondary. I just like, I like the whole vibe. Mm. They're whole, they're confident that they're not cocky. They're, they know they have something to prove, but they also aren't going to sit back here and let people tell them that they sucked. I think it's a good combination. BIA is definitely a vibe. I like to, there, we, Perry was talking a little bit about this. If you look at some of the skill sets of these guys, Court is a little bit of an outlier because he's the bigger guy who's more of a linebacker hybrid. But the rest of the room, I think, could conceivably play any of the three safety positions. And I'm not sure that Jim Knowles has ever had that before because I don't even think he would put like Tanner McAllister in the other two roles last year. I think no. Tanner was like specialized as a nickel. Maybe he still specializes as a nickel here. But the other guys, the ability to like line up three safeties and the uh, and the opposing offense not know what position that guy's playing on a given snap, I think unlocks a little bit more for Jim Knowles' defense maybe he's not had in the past. It yeah. almost does that, and you've brought this up previously, Bill, that you can put a fourth safety out there if it's Court Williams yeah. and disguise things even further. I tried to ask Court about that, and he's way too savvy <laughs> to have given it away because he i said well, what do you like about jim Knowles' defense well it's the ability to be versatile and flexible and, and show different looks and shift into them with your personnel and it's well isn't that because of you because you can dramatically change what the defense looks like from play to play and he's like uh no austin it's all of us uh-huh sure uh, court's pretty smart yeah. i also want to bring up a name i heard from a few guys tonight it was jansen dunn which, oh, oh, which you know, oh, he, he, got, he pulled the rug out. A, a guy we haven't spoken a lot about, but he's playing, from what I understand, almost exclusively at corner now to add a number over there. And that's a big athlete playing corner who who really was, you know, able to move around quite a bit and had been climbing the depth chart last year at safety before he got hurt. So if you can add him into the mix there, take some of the pressure off the back end of the corners of, and let Jair Brown and, and Ryan Turner develop a little bit more naturally, I think that. It's just another one of those pieces where you have so many guys that can do multiple things that um, it, it's just sort of a bunch of puzzle pieces to move around. And Jansen Dunn is a guy that I heard three or four different kids talk to me about specifically today, which is, you know, when, when the kids start talking about dudes, like that's when you start going, okay, well, maybe there's something there. And, and they, there's some uh, guys who have been pretty impressed by what he's doing working out at corner. That's really the last person you wanted to talk about in the secondary? Yeah. Why? No one else? I'm worried about punt returners from here on out. <laughs> That's all I care about. So who should do that? Parker Fleming he needs to have a conversation. <laughs> apparently, no. Obviously, you know we we did. Of Parker course, Fleming's not eligible. To we return did <laughs> ask Cameron Martinez about his development, and he seems like he's enjoying himself. He wants to return punts. It's pretty clear. Not he yet. has my vote. He has my vote. I don't. I don't. Not sure. I'm gonna. You're characterizing that conversation the right way. Oh, okay. I think. You wanted Cam to return punts, and he was saying, "Firm, if you want to tell Parker that, please do tomorrow." <laughs> I'll be very clear. He didn't say tell him. He said ask him, because we don't dictate what happens around these parts. But I think what he said was, 
you can tell them that if you want. Yeah, I mean, I think that people should tell them. Folks, <laughs> America. America. <laughs> if you're on social media, find Ohio State's assistant coach, Parker Fleming, on uh -huh. Twitter. And make sure you let them know that Cameron Martinez should probably return punts. Tell them Berm sent you. <laughs> Um, Send them uh, flapjack emojis. No, but none of that. But no, here's the deal. Um, I think Cameron <laughs> understands, and, what, and he actually did somewhat agree that there's a little bit of a difference in style when he's returning punts potentially versus when Jackson Smith and Jigba, the Smith and Jigba is returning punts. And so it's all about what you need in that given moment. I think we will see him out there returning some punts. I'd like to see both out there at the same time. That's always Ooh, creepy. Oh. Um, but it, it's a kid that. <laughs> You know, he had a highlight film that was nine straight minutes of touchdowns in high school. Just nine his senior straight, year. Nine straight minutes. His senior year, America. It's crazy. Huh. Parker Fleming. I think it's just Parker Fleming OSU. I so wait. Sure. Yes. Yeah, no, Coach Parker Should they Fleming. copy that YouTube link? Yeah, probably. And send it. And just say, hey, Parker. by the way, Coach Fleming, be respectful. Mr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Yeah. Fleming. Hold on. Let's not get sir, crazy. Sir. It's Coach Parker. Lord Fleming. Fleming. <laughs> if you Have you noticed this gentleman here is on your roster? Look what he can do. With the football in yeah. his hands. Well, yeah, they should send Cam's YouTube link. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what I just said. Yeah. Nine minutes of tutties. Copy sure. the link. Tutties. That's Sincerely. That's all I got. Ohio State fans. We, we really appreciate everyone always CC. sticking around. Snappy Jays. To the end. It just put snap judgments. Okay, we're over Snappy Jays. Oh. We're past it. Wow. We're, we're moving on. Okay. I've universally declared. Done. Anything else? Thanks for joining us on Snap Judgments. <laughs> The No Fun Zone here on the podcast. That's Bill Landis and Jeremy Birmingham. I am Austin Ward. We will see you tomorrow.